Good week guys. So uh, this video I wanted to make and hopefully we'll continue it next Wednesday. I just wanted to talk briefly about developing Christian character. So character is who you are on the inside. It's not necessarily just who you portray. Anybody can portray to others who, who they want to be. But character is more than that. Character is who you are on the inside. It's who you are when nobody's watching. And obviously as Christians we want to have godly character, which means we want to be like Jesus, like God. So in order to develop godly character, one key thing that we need to do is to hang around godly people. 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. And Proverbs 13.20 says, Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. So with that, we see uh, what, what we're he hearing here from God's word is first, when we hang around bad company, it affects our character negatively. It will make us have bad character. And if we look at Proverbs, as we walk with wise, we can be the wise, we can become wise. And then it goes on to, to agree with what Paul said in 1 Corinthians, a companion of fools suffers harm. So I think it's important, first of all, to note that in the Bible, when it uses the word fool, it's not the way that we think of the word fool. We, in mo using modern English, tend to think of the idea of a fool being somebody who just isn't very intelligent, or maybe they're clumsy and they mess up a lot. Well, that's not what the Bible means when it says a fool. What the Bible means is somebody who is intentionally doing wrong. In the same way, when it says wise, we could, so we could use the word godly synonymously with wise. Because a wisdom is not net just knowledge, it's using the knowledge that you have. So it's, it's, it's really talking about if you hang out with the godly people, you'll become godly. And if you hang out with ungodly people, you're, you will suffer harm. You'll be hurt by it. And over time, it will corrode your character, which is what Paul said, bad company, company corrupts good character. Now, this doesn't mean we shouldn't have any friends, obviously. Proverbs 18.24 also says, a man of too many friends comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. If you look at that in the original Hebrew, you'll see it to say, a man of friends comes to ruin. So who, what is a man of friends? I think a good example of a man of friends uh, would be found on any social media site. There are many people who go on to social media to collect likes, to collect views, friends, followers, whatever you want to call them on different social medias. People are trying to pursue popularity digitally today, and even especially always people pursue popularity, but digitally, especially today, we see people that have the desire to pursue being popular. Well, that's not what we ought to do as Christians. The focus of the friends that we have should be the quality, not the quantity. So uh, another verse I wanted to point out was Hebrews 10.25. It says, do not stop meeting together as is the habit of some. And Paul wrote, or Paul was probably the author of Hebrews. We don't know necessarily who the author of Hebrews was, but the author of Hebrews wrote this and was writing it to a church. So we see churches are told not to stop meeting together, not to stop spending time with each other. In the same way, uh, we can apply that to our Christian friends because a Christian friends make up the church. So we should always have fellowship with other Christians. Paul and his ministry never traveled alone. Uh, he always went on three missionary journeys, was recorded in Acts. But he always took a companion with him as he went. Uh, Jesus had 12 apostles with him, and they were his close friends. And he had three friends out of those that were even on a deeper level, very intimate friends with him. And so with that, we can see the example that God gave us in Scripture. I've heard it said before that every Christian or every person should have a Paul, a Barnabas, and a Timothy in their life. And if you don't know from the story of Acts, Paul was the mentor figure, Barnabas was Paul's uh, friend, and Timothy was Paul's pupil. So you need to have somebody who is a mentor to you, somebody who is your friend, you're kind of at your level, you'd say, and somebody maybe that you can help along in their spiritual walk, like Paul had Timothy. Another thing I'd like to note, too, is that really uh, the idea of having friends the opposite gender, well, Obviously, it's good to have anybody as a friend, but your closest friends are not going to be somebody who's the opposite gender, necessarily, because especially once you get married, 
you're not going to have those friendships being as close anymore. Um, I would really recommend that you have friends of your own gender, and not to say only friends of your own gender, but I would really recommend that you have friends of your own gender that you can have to share your deep problems with, especially uh, you know as you get older, as you get married. Uh, those would be the friendships that last. So I really recommend that. Um, and even in if you go back in history, it would be kind of unheard of to have friends of the opposite gender that you'd be with alone uh, that you weren't married to or in a relationship with. So I'd really want to recommend that to you to have friends of your own gender because those are going to be the friends that you have the strongest relationships with and the ones that really can last over a long time. And uh, just as Paul said here, bad company corrupts good character. And Solomon said, walk with the wise and become wise. Another thing I'd like to recommend is that you have friends who are Christians. And not to say, again, not exclusively, but you want to have close friends who are Christians because they will be concerned about your spiritual well-being. Now, it's kind of funny to, to even go over this topic in the middle of, so, middle of social distancing. But we still, uh, I think it also can serve as a reminder to us, don't neglect the friends that you have right now. Um, one thing I also recommend is to pray for your friends. Uh, Colossians 1, 9 through 14 would be a good reading. It was Paul's prayer for the Colossian church. So not only should we, we should pray for our friends, but what did Paul pray for in Colossians 1? Well, he prayed for their spiritual growth. So pray for your friends that they'll grow spiritually. Obviously, they'll be protected as well. But pray for your friends in this time. Reach out to them. And uh, don't let your relationship, don't become, a, uh, don't become isolated in this time. Don't become a recluse. You want to make sure you're reaching out to people. Don't try to be alone. You know, uh, there's uh, that catchphrase now, alone together. Well, uh, you know, don't be alone. Try to be uh, with people in any way that you can. Uh, don't go to their house, but give them a call. Uh, and, you know, we can even foster those godly relationships with godly people even now while we're in the middle of a pandemic. And then hopefully as soon, this ends soon and at that time we'll be able to go back to normal life. But I hope this is a, a application of you can apply this. hope that you are able to uh, remember what Paul and Solomon wrote here and look at this and, and apply it to your life that you need to have good godly friends that can speak into your own life. And even... Uh, even have mentors as well. Have somebody that you can look up to uh, that you can really learn from and become wise because you're walking with wise people. Thanks for watching.